Jake's father gifted him a dog with the hope that the animal would assist his paralyzed son. The subsequent events left everyone stunned. Krusty, the border collie, awoke after midnight, sensing something seriously amiss. Observing Jake's bed, Krusty immediately grasped the gravity of the situation. With a dog's instinct, he hurried to the bedroom door, understanding that time was of the essence. In his canine heart, Krusty realized that without prompt intervention, Jake's life was in jeopardy. Jake, a special teenager, faced challenges from a young age. His first stroke occurred at just 15 days old, altering the trajectory of his life. Dealing with hemiplegia, or unilateral cerebral palsy, Jake struggled with weakness on one side of his body, causing delays in walking. Fatigue, behavioral issues, and frustration compounded his difficulties. Nursery school only intensified his struggles, requiring assistance with daily tasks and leading to trouble at school due to focus issues. In a last-ditch effort to improve Jake's situation, his parents followed medical advice and decided to get him a dog. The dog, initially meant to be a friend and companion rather than a service dog, brought unexpected twists. Krusty, a street dog for three years, altered his usual food route that morning, anticipating the butcher's early opening. Familiar with Mr. Dunwoody's kindness, Krusty hoped for a meal, having relied on discarded food for the past two days during his meandering journey across town, driven by no specific purpose. However, Krusty, driven by an indescribable longing in his canine mind, remained uncertain about what exactly he sought. All he knew was that he would recognize it when he encountered it. Mr. Dunwoody noticed the dog as soon as he entered the butcher shop and warmly greeted him. Good morning, boy, the butcher exclaimed with a broad smile, expressing concern about Krusty's absence for a couple of days. Seated before the counter, Krusty tilted his head, ears perked, attentively absorbing every word from the kind man. Although he comprehended nothing, Krusty's eyes were fixed on the butcher's animated presentation of the day's treats. The butcher suggested a string of sausages, hinting at his freshly made, secret recipe. Placing the sausages on the counter, Mr. Dunwoody grabbed a bowl and vanished behind the glass front into the meat display. Krusty licked his lips as he observed the butcher shovel chopped meat into a stainless steel container. Anticipation heightened, and Krusty thumped his tail harder, knowing what awaited him. The butcher would call him into the back, leaving him alone with the food until the feast was ready, the perfect meal of the week that Krusty eagerly anticipated. As for Jake's parents, they faced uncertainty in their quest for a companion dog for their son. Unsure about the right breed, size, or temperament, they deliberated over options. Should they opt for a large, older dog or something smaller? A laid-back, chubby canine or an active, energetic one? The search for the ideal canine companion for Jake presented them with numerous questions and decisions to make. They remained uncertain. Ethan, Jake's father, donned his coat and headed for the door. Turning to his wife, he pecked her on the cheek and assured her that the club meeting would be brief, promising to return before 10. She reminded him of the pledge he made when they decided to get Jake a dog, to seek advice at the next club meeting. Ethan nodded, hugged her, and left for the Porcupine Creek Golf Club, nestled in the foothills of the Santa Rosa Mountain. In the boardroom, Ethan, seated at the head of the long table, observed his fellow board members, including Jack Kaner, the owner of a statewide chain of hardware stores, and Henry Stubbs, CEO of a local accountancy firm, gathered. Seven other men joined them as the meeting commenced. Just before nine, Ethan shared details about his son, Jake, whom they all knew and liked. Seeking advice on the type of dog to get, Ethan glanced to the other end of the table, where Mr. Dunwoody, the club's secretary and local butcher, listened attentively. After the meeting, Mr. Dunwoody approached Ethan, pulling him aside with a suggestion to hold off on getting a dog. He claimed to have a potential canine companion and needed a few days to arrange it. Meanwhile, it took Krusty three days before he returned to the butcher shop. During this time, Mr. Dunwoody anxiously watched the door, his plan fully formed. Krusty, a bright and charming dog with a troubled past, appeared slightly worse for wear on that particular day. Mr. Dunwoody recalled the first time he encountered Krusty, wanting to adopt him instantly. However, his wife's severe asthma prevented that option. 
Assuming Krusty once had a home but ended up on the streets, Mr. Dunwoody welcomed the dog into his shop as soon as he appeared. Mr. Dunwoody shuffled around the counter and lowered himself to his hunches, continuing to address Krusty as if the dog were human. With a compassionate tone, the butcher said, We need to talk, boy, big stuff. I think I have a new home for you. Krusty, unable to comprehend the words, tilted his head and perked his ears. The butcher selected sausages, liver, and chopped steak, mixing them in a bowl for Krusty. Leading the dog to the packing room in the back, he closed the door softly and immediately dialed Jake's dad on the telephone. Excitement filled the air as Mr. Dunwoody explained the situation to Jake's dad, urging him to bring Jake to the butcher shop immediately. Singing Krusty's praises, he conveyed the urgency of the matter. Back home, Jake's mom, Emily, was surprised by her husband's early return. He shared the news about the dog, and though initially suspicious of a stray, Emily agreed to let their son meet the dog under proper supervision. After all, the butcher had known and cared for Krusty for three years. An hour later, Jake and his parents entered the butchery. Mr. Dunwoody engaged in unnecessary small talk, keeping a close eye on Jake. The boy's excitement grew as he leaned on his crutches, patiently waiting for his turn to meet the dog. Despite his politeness, Jake's posture conveyed eagerness, urging the grown-ups to hasten their conversation and introduce him to Krusty. After a deliberate delay, Mr. Dunwoody finally turned to Jake, asking with a wink, Do you want to meet the mutt? Without waiting for an answer, he opened the door to the back of the butchery. Krusty had finished his bowl of meat, enjoyed a bowl of water, and indulged in another bowl of different meat. Krusty found himself a little confused. While Mr. Dunwoody had always treated him well, today felt especially significant. The dog couldn't recall the last time he had eaten so much. However, when the door remained shut after he finished his feast, Krusty became edgy. Confinement reminded him of unpleasant times, and the closed door made him feel trapped. Entering the store, he felt unsure, although he often emerged after meals when customers were present. These particular people seemed different. Ethan caught Krusty's immediate liking, the man had a warm smile. But the true revelation came when Krusty looked at Jake, a boy in his teens. In that moment, Krusty realized that this was what he had been searching for on the streets for so long. His heart had led him to find this boy. Without hesitation, Krusty headed straight for Jake. His tail wagged vigorously, and he nuzzled his nose into Jake's open hand. By now, Jake was on his knees, embracing the dog. In less than 30 seconds, Jake turned to his parents and declared, This is the dog, Mom, Dad. This is the dog I want. Can we take him home now? However, Mr. Dunwoody intervened with a solemn face, explaining that it wasn't that simple. Krusty didn't belong to him, and the dog should have a say in whether he goes home with Jake. Undeterred, Jake asked how they could determine Krusty's choice. Mr. Dunwoody winked at Jake's dad and suggested, pull the car around. Park in front of the shop. If Krusty jumps in of his own volition, he's made his choice. That night marked the first time Jake had company in his room. It felt like the excitement he only experienced the night before Christmas. Neither Jake nor Krusty slept a wink. Krusty explored every nook and cranny of his new home, eventually settling on Jake's bed and creating a nest at the boy's feet. For the next six years, this became the nightly scene in the household, the boy happily drifting into dreamland, forgetting the problems he faced in his young life, comforted by his best friend, Krusty the Border Collie. However, tonight was different. Krusty looked over his shoulder and saw that Jake wasn't doing well. Jumping up, he managed to open the bedroom door and dashed down the hallway into Jake's parents' room. With one fluid movement, he launched himself onto the bed where they slept. Jake's mom and dad immediately sensed that something was wrong. Without waiting for them, Krusty ran full speed down the hallway, pausing for a split second at Jake's door to ensure they were following, and then disappeared inside. Ambulances arrived ten minutes later. Ethan grabbed Krusty by the collar to keep him out of the paramedic's way while they stabilized Jake. Then, they carried the boy down the stairs on a gurney. Jake's parents followed them outside but locked Krusty in the house first and then in the car. Emily cried and prayed, and Ethan reached over to squeeze her hand. 
His frown and thumping heart revealed the weight of the situation. The doctors had warned them for years that this age was critical, a potential window for a second stroke with dire consequences. Despite the concerns, things have been going well with Jake's health, especially since Krusty joined the family. The wait at the hospital was agonizing. Jake was wheeled straight into the emergency room, and his parents settled into the waiting area. For over an hour, they had no contact with a doctor or nurse, and panic began to rise. Not knowing was a formidable challenge, and both experienced it in spades. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the doctor appeared. Briefly conferring with a nurse and handing another a clipboard with a set of instructions, he then walked over to Jake's parents. There are still some tests to run, he stated slowly and solemnly, but his prognosis is good. In fact, not just good. It's excellent. You managed to catch the stroke minutes after it started. I don't know how you did it, but that undoubtedly saved your boy's life, the doctor commended. When Emily inquired about Jake's chances of making a full recovery, the doctor smiled again. You caught it before it could do a world of damage, and he got to the hospital in record time. Yes, he will recover fully. The physician frowned again and added, I'm curious how you caught it so quickly, though. It's the middle of the night. Usually, when this kind of thing happens in the small hours, people don't realize it until morning, and in most cases, by then, the damage is done. After Ethan explained what had transpired, the doctor smiled. You should keep that dog hip deep in prime stake for the rest of his life. Your son survived because of him. What an incredible story about how humans and animals care for each other. The doctor then concluded with a request for stories about people whose lives were saved by a dog, inviting viewers to share in the comments. For now, though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video. Let's continue. The man went into the forest to hunt, and unexpectedly met a tigress. Usually, animals in the wild try to stay away from humans out of fear, but this tigress approached the man actively. The man raised his weapon nervously, but the next move of the tigress stunned him. The wilderness has always been a magical place, but also a place of curiosity. For Hunter Joseph, uninhabited places are the best places for hunting. He often goes to the wilderness for exploration and adventure, and he thinks there will be unexpected gains there. Joseph was born in a small village in Russia. The small countryside is located beside a magnificent forest and is surrounded by many villages. Joseph was taken into the forest by his father at a young age to learn how to hunt. As he grew older, knowing the forest and knowing how to protect himself there, Joseph began to work as a hunter, but what Joseph didn't know was that a love of the wild would one day lead him into a difficult situation and change him forever his life. On this day, Joseph woke up at sunrise as usual, then put on all the equipment and walked into the forest. He hoped this was a good start. Since several customers have already ordered some wild game from him, Joseph plans to catch a large number of prey in the morning, because the morning sun illuminates the entire forest, and Joseph can better spot the prey. At noon, Joseph decided to have lunch and rest. He had caught several birds, so he decided to cook one for lunch. Although Joseph was in the depths of the forest, and the place was not familiar to him, he was not afraid at all, because he could always follow his footsteps back to the village. Joseph found that there was a lot of light directly in front of him, which was very bright, which meant that there was an open space very suitable for resting, but when Joseph entered the small open space, what appeared in front of him shocked him, standing in the middle of the open space was a tiger, and Joseph froze in terror. The tiger heard Joseph coming clearly, for the tiger was staring at Joseph as he came through the bushes, however, although a tiger can easily catch a human being who suddenly appears in front of it, it doesn't seem to want to harm a human being. In fact, when Joseph suddenly appeared, the tiger was very calm. Seeing the behavior of the tiger, Joseph quickly raised the weapon in his hand and pointed it at the tiger, but the tiger did not move, just kept staring at Joseph. The tiger's behavior baffled Joseph, who didn't want to harm the ferocious animal if it wasn't a real threat to him. So Joseph slowly lowered his weapon and walked towards the tiger little by little. When the tiger saw the human move towards him, the tiger took a few steps back. As the tiger moved, Joseph noticed that it was a female tiger because its chest was swollen and filled with a lot of milk, 
which also meant that the tiger had just given birth and there must be some tiger cubs around. At the same time, Joseph also noticed that the tiger was limping when he moved, and the tiger's leg may have been injured. Concerned for the tiger's health, Joseph approached it slowly and gave it a soft call, which seemed to calm the tigress as it stopped roaring and kept Joseph at a distance from it. Just a few feet away. As Joseph got closer to the tiger, he found that the tigress's wounds were more serious than expected. It seemed that some bad guys wanted to shoot the poor feline, but the bad guys didn't shoot the tiger. The key point was just to shoot the tiger in the back leg. Although the tiger escaped successfully and saved its life, its hind leg was seriously injured. At the same time, Joseph found that the wound had been infected, which had affected the tiger's health. Seeing the terrible state of the wound, Joseph immediately tried to rescue the tiger, but the tigress used its roar to stop Joseph from advancing, but then the tigress did something extraordinary. It turned away from the clearing and stopped among the surrounding trees. Just then Joseph began to hear small roars, the sounds of the tigress cubs. The tigress gently picked up a cub from the ground, then limped to Joseph's side, and gently placed the cub at Joseph's feet. The tigress then went back to fetch a second cub and placed it next to the first cub. Joseph was in disbelief and amazement at what was happening, he did not understand what the tigress was going to do to her cubs, and Joseph was afraid that if he tried to pet the cubs, the tigress would attack him. I don't know if the tigress noticed Joseph's fear, but the tigress began to walk away from Joseph and her cubs slowly. Joseph was shocked by this and tried to tell the tigress not to leave, but the tigress just glanced back at Joseph lightly, and then disappeared into the forest. Joseph looked at the back of the tigress leaving. Although he was puzzled, he knew in his heart that a mother would never leave her child if she had no choice. Perhaps the tigress thought she was running out of time and wanted to make sure her two cubs survived, so she had to. Joseph was deeply moved by the behavior of the tigress, so he returned to his home with the two cubs in his arms. Concerned for the health of the cubs, Joseph decided to take them to the local veterinarian to make sure there was nothing wrong with them and he was able to care for them as best as possible. The veterinarian did not find any disease in the two cubs after examination, they are very healthy. In addition, the veterinarian told Joseph how to care for them. Since then, Joseph has become the mother of the little tiger. Under careful care, the two little tigers grew up gradually. This incident aroused the attention of the local zoo. The zoo wanted to buy the two cubs, but Joseph refused. He believed that tigers should enjoy freedom instead of being locked in a cage for people to visit. Moreover, there is another regret in Joseph's heart, that is, the tigress did not watch her cubs grow up, so Joseph decided to return the two cubs to the tigress, but he did not know whether the tigress survived, so Joseph returned to the clearing with the little tiger in his arms, waiting for a miracle to happen. Just when Joseph was about to give up, a tiger suddenly came out from the bushes. Joseph recognized that it was the tigress, so he gently put the two cubs on the ground. The tigress recognized her cub, and it quickly ran to the cub's side. Fortunately, its leg has recovered, and it can take care of its own baby. It growled at Joseph, as if expressing its gratitude. Joseph bid farewell to the tigress and cubs, which left an unforgettable memory in his heart. In the following days, he continued to hunt in the forest. He never thought that he would encounter tigers again. A few years later, Joseph met a grizzly bear in the forest, and the grizzly wanted to attack him. At this critical juncture, two tigers suddenly rushed out from the nearby bushes. They howled angrily at the grizzly bear, and the grizzly bear was scared away. Joseph was surprised to find that these two tiger cubs were the cubs he had rescued back then. He didn't expect the tigers to recognize him, so he walked up to the tigers and stroked them quietly, and the love between humans and animals seemed to flow at that moment. Let's continue. Today we want to tell you a wonderful story, a girl brought back from the forest a little tiger crying for mother. Only those who have no feelings will not help injured wild animals when they pass by them, especially when they find newborn animals wandering alone in the streets or forests. Marina likes to walk in the forest. The five-year-old girl grew up in nature, so she is very fond of wild animals. Marina goes to the forest every day to collect mushrooms and wild fruits, and then runs in the woods, picking flowers. On weekends, she would stay in the forest until evening before returning home. 
she lives alone with her grandmother. She often spends her day outside, the girl loves animals very much and helps them, she doesn't want animals to get hurt before her eyes. One day, when Marina was wandering in the woods, she came across a tiger cub, a newborn baby tiger, and the girl noticed that the little animal was exhausted and in need of food. So she took it home and wanted to help it. Marina lives in a small house with her grandmother, an orphan. The child's parents were involved in a traffic accident many years ago, both died, and then two-year-old Marina was miraculously rescued, and she was taken to the hospital. When she recovered, her grandmother took her to live with her. Marina walked into her grandmother's room with the cub in her hand and told her that she had a surprise for her. The grandmother panicked when she saw the animal and asked her granddaughter to put it back immediately where she found it because it was dangerous. Marina was so disappointed that she left her grandmother's room, intending to put the cub back where it belonged. Meanwhile, the grandmother notices that her granddaughter is sad, and she always wants to make her happy because she is an orphan. So the grandmother ran out and told her that she would let her keep the animal, but she had to release him when he was old enough to take care of itself. The girl was so happy to hear what her grandmother said, she put the tiger on the ground and ran to her grandmother, hugging her and kissing her repeatedly. Because she now allows the little tiger to be with her. At first, grandma wasn't happy with the little tiger at home, but as time went by, she noticed that it was a very cute and funny animal, and it made her granddaughter happy, which made her happy too. The little tiger is very quiet and gentle, and it has been playing with Marina. They ate together, slept in the same room, hung out in the garden of the house together, and a strong friendship developed between the two of them. The grandmother was only 46 years old and her granddaughter was only 5 years old, and she and her husband divorced because they didn't get along well. The woman was attractive, leading some to believe she was Marina's mother. Although most of the men in the village try to approach her, she focuses on taking care of her granddaughter because she doesn't want to distract her and wants her to focus on her studies. After the tiger stayed at home for about four months, the grandmother noticed that her granddaughter became more attached to him, but the tiger also grew bigger and bigger and it had to be returned to the forest. To free her granddaughter from her attachment to the cub, the grandmother tried to spend as long as possible with her granddaughter, who she considered her best friend. Over time, neighbors discovered a tiger in her home, and a group of women asked her to release the tiger back into the forest because it was dangerous. Eventually the grandmother told her granddaughter that she decided to release the tiger back into the forest first. The poor tiger showed great sadness when he realized he was leaving the home. That night the tiger didn't eat anything. He began to lie on the ground and didn't sleep all night. In the morning, the grandmother got up, tied the tiger with a chain around her neck, and took it and her granddaughter into the forest. When they reached the place where Marina first found the tiger, they left the tiger there. But suddenly, a huge tiger appeared and started approaching them. The grandmother and her granddaughter backed away in fear, waiting for the tiger to attack them, but then it turned to the cub before starting to pet it, while the cub lay on her lap and started licking it. The grandmother and her granddaughter realized that the big tiger was the mother of the cubs they kept in the house. They were ecstatic when they realized the little animal had found its mother. After a while, the grandmother and her granddaughter went home. A few days later, Marina missed her friend the little tiger, so she went into the forest to meet him. When Marina met the cub, she ran to it, hugged it, and played with it. Seeing how much fun they had, the tigress decided not to approach them so that the little girl would not get scared. The girl stayed with the tiger all day, and only returned home when night fell. There, she found her grandmother waiting for her, and she was worried about her, despite warnings from her grandmother not to go back into the woods again, as it might threaten her life. But she insisted on meeting her friend, she even took him home and gave him food. Not only does Marina have to feed the cubs, but she sometimes asks her grandmother to buy her a piece of meat for his mother. The tigress is very grateful to the girl and her grandmother for saving her cubs. A week passed, and the cub and its mother never visited the place where Marina met them before. The little girl thought that they might have gone to another forest and started a new life there. One day, when grandmother and Marina returned from the market, she found a man parked in front of her door, waiting for her there. The man claimed he had an affair with Marina's mum and that he was her biological father. 
The grandmother was shocked and asked the man to leave her house immediately or she would call the police, then she grabbed her granddaughter's hand and told her not to listen to what the man was saying and hid in her house. Moments later, the grandmother heard a knock on the door, and when she opened it, the man rushed in, still holding a rifle. The man pushed her to the ground before grabbing Marina and trying to pull her out of the house. The grandmother tries to protect her granddaughter from the man. But she couldn't, and when she tried to scream, he told her he was going to shoot her granddaughter and run away. The grandmother could only keep her mouth shut and watch the man take her granddaughter into the car. Just as the man was about to close the car door and get in, a tiger attacked from behind, pushed him to the ground and began to bite him. Meanwhile, the grandmother ran to the car, opened the door, pulled out her granddaughter, entered the house, and immediately called the police. After a while, a policeman arrived, and they found the man lying in a pool of blood, which was caused by a tiger. The tiger was the mother of the cub rescued by Marina, and they immediately called an ambulance. People were taken to the hospital and then straight to prison. The police officer continued to comfort the grandmother and her granddaughter, and also gave the grandmother his phone number and told her not to hesitate to call him if she had problems in the future. It turns out that this man is not Marina's father, but a fraudster who usually kidnaps children for ransom. The police often came to visit the grandmother and her granddaughter, and he used to play with Marina, he got the heart of a beautiful woman, they were married soon, and they both moved to live with him in his house. That's today's story, don't forget to share your thoughts on this unusual story, don't forget to like, bookmark, and see you next time.